Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part 2 of our series on Ansible for Absolute Beginner. In part 1 we talked about what Ansible is, where does it stand in DevOps ecosystem and we understood that Ansible generally falls under configuration management automation tools but we also understood that we can use it for more than just configuration automation. In that video we also set up our local Windows machine using WSL to run Ansible. We installed OpenSSH server so that we can connect from our local host to localhost using SSH in order to mimic a remote server to automate using Ansible. Now in today's video we are going to talk about Ansible inventories and YAML which is the basic language that you would need to understand in order to write Ansible playbooks. Although Ansible is written in Python, Ansible playbooks are written using YAML. So let's start with Ansible inventories first. Now we know that Ansible can work with one or more servers, right? Now in order to connect with remote servers, Ansible uses either SSH for Linux type of operating systems or PowerShell remoting using WinRM for Wintel type of operating systems. And we also know that Ansible is agentless. This is one of the biggest advantage of Ansible. Now by default, if you don't provide any Ansible inventory file and you are just trying to run Ansible playbooks or Ansible ad hoc commands, Ansible will look for inventory file under etc Ansible host directory. So let's just start our WSL machine. Okay, we have started the WSL machine. You can just start it using WSL hyphen D and your distribution name in our case which is Ubuntu using a within PowerShell. So as soon as I type WSL hyphen D Ubuntu, I'm inside my WSL machine. Now let's say if I try to run Ansible ad hoc command. Now if you see, uh, it gave me a warning that no inventory was passed. The reason is because by default Ansible will look for inventories under etc Ansible hosts directory. Now in my case, if you see, I don't have etc Ansible directory or file. So that's why uh, the Ansible ad hoc command gave me an error that no inventory was passed. So if you don't specify an Ansible inventory while running ad hoc commands or Ansible playbooks, Ansible will try to find the Ansible inventory under etc Ansible hosts directory. Now Ansible inventory can be in INI format which is similar to the text format or in YAML format. So you can create your inventories in your preferred method. If you like YAML, if you're more comfortable with YAML, you can create YAML based inventories. We, we will be looking at few examples in this video for that as well as INI format, which is simply just your text format. Now essentially in a nutshell, inventory is just a list of servers. So for example, let's say if I create an inventory called host.ini in my present working directory, uh, before doing that, let me just move to the Ansible directory. Let me clear the screen. So let's just create a inventory file host.ini. Now I mentioned, right? So Ansible inventory is just a list of hosts. So let's say I want to create a inventory file for local host and then host one dot example dot com. Similarly host two, host three, host four. So in this way, we have just created a INI text based inventory, which has five hosts. One is called local host. And then we have host one, two, three, and four. And this essentially is an inventory, uh, Ansible inventory. Now you can also divide these uh, hosts into groups and groups can be created by adding your group name within the square bracket. So let's say we say DB servers, anything under uh, this square bracket comes under DB servers uh, group. And let's say we just create web server. So now we have two groups in this INI file. One is called DB servers and second one is called web servers. So this is how we can create groups. Now we can create host alias as well. So let's say we just call, we want to call the first one as D, uh, first host as DB1. And now to define the actual host, which would represent DB1, we can use Ansible underscore host keyword. And that way now DB1 is an alias for local host and we can create more. So now you can see DB1, DB2, DB3 are three host alias which are actually pointing to local host, host one and host two. So Ansible host can be your FQTN or an IP address of your remote host where you want to actually connect. And alias could be the names that you want to call them within your playbook or ad hoc commands. Similar to that, let's just create host alias for web servers. So now we have created a uh, three DB hosts and two web hosts. And we have also created their alias names. Similar to that within an host inventory, you can also add host variables. So for example, DB1 related variables you can add after this. Also, you can add additional inventory parameters. For example, let's say DB1 and DB2 are Windows host and DB3 and Web1 and Web2 are Linux host. So in order to connect to DB1 and DB2, obviously we would need to use WinRM 
protocol to connect and the Linux one will use SSH protocol to connect. So what we can do is we can just say ansible underscore connection is equal to S, uh, WinRM, right? For first two. And for uh, this one, let's say we want to use SSH. So this way we can also add additional parameters to our inventory. And now for now we don't need it. So let's just remove it for this demo's purpose because we don't have a Windows host uh, to test against. We are going to test against just the local host. And obviously any uh, playbook or ad hoc command against these hosts would fail as we would see later on. Now before going to the demo, let's look at the official documentation for Ansible inventory. So like I mentioned in the last video, we can go to docs.ansible.com and under the latest one, you can go to building Ansible inventory section. This would be under using as Ansible section. First one is how to build your inventory. Then working with the dynamic inventories, we will be talking about them later on, patterns and connection methods and details. So, you know, like I mentioned last time, you don't need to go anywhere else. Docs.ansible.com would have everything that you would need to understand and run Ansible. So as you can see in this documentation, they are also mentioning that by default, Ansible looks under etc Ansible hosts for your inventory file. And you can have inventories either in INI format or a YAML format. So uh, you can convert your hosts to groups if you want. So for example, if you see in this YAML format, all means everything, then you, you might have hosts, simple host, which doesn't have any group, mail.example.com. And then you can have web servers and DB servers, two groups. Now default group, all is default group and ungrouped is also the default group. So these two are special keywords. The all group contains every host and the ungrouped uh, contains all other hosts that, that doesn't reside under all. So now in this case, for example, the mail host uh, mail.example.com belongs to all group as well as ungrouped category because this actually doesn't have any other group other than the all. Whereas the other ones, foo, bar, and one, two, three, these hosts are part of some groups. So they would be grouped host, which would come under all, but not under ungrouped. If I run my playbook against this inventory and say, run against the ungrouped host, it would just get executed against mail.example.com. But if I just say all, then it would get executed against all the hosts defined in this inventory, right? So, and other than that, uh, we can have parent child relationship as well. So for example, you can create a parent and child groups and child group would inherit all the variables from your parent group. You can create range also based on patterns. So right now, if you see, we have www 0 to 50.example.com. So this is a great example of creating patterns within your inventory if your naming conventions allow that. You can also include range. So for example, in this case, we would have 0, 01 for starting from 0, 01 and incremented by 2 every time. So 0, 01, 0, 3, 0, 5, so on and so forth. And we can also define alphabetical ranges if we want. Like for example, in this case, it would be D, D, A, B, C, D up until F dot example dot com. One more interesting thing is we can also pass multiple inventory sources. So let's say you have different uh, inventories for your um, dev and stage environment and prod environment. You can specify all of them using hyphen I when running the playbook. So if you see here, we have Ansible playbook get logs dot YAML. And then we have hyphen I staging inventory and production inventory. One more interesting thing is that we can also organize inventories in a directory. So under one directory, you can create multiple types of inventory. Here you see we have YAML type of inventory. We have a dynamic inventory, which is getting generated by this uh, Python script. We have on-prem and parent group static inventory. So all of them can be combined into one and we can just call the inventory directory when running the playbook. Also, in this inventory directory, we can also manage the loading order. So the inventories are loaded in ASCII format according to the file name. So we can name the files like 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, and 04 if you want, or any other method that you think uh, you want to load your inventory. Also, uh, we mentioned this already in the previous WSL screen. We can add host variables and group variables in inventory. So this is an example of adding a host variable where we have host one and added the variables required for host one. And host two might have different variables, although they are part of the same group. And we also talk about uh, inventory alias. So jumper is in this case is actually pointing to 192.0.2.50 and Ansible port is 555. We can also convert it into a YAML format like this. 
Now we talked about host variables. Similar to that, we can also create group variables. So for example, we have a group called Atlanta, which has two hosts, host one and host two. Uh, we can create a section within brackets called Atlanta colon wars. These variables get would get applied to all the hosts that are part of Atlanta group. And similar to INI, we can also write this in YAML format, which is mentioned here. So you have Atlanta group, which has two hosts, host one and host two and the variables section is if you see the identification is very important in ansible because it's using yaml so if you see here we have two space identification here to define the hosts so variable should be also variable section would also need two identification because this uh, variables are for all the hosts under this atlanta group right so if we had uh, to define the host variables that would be under the host section like here if you see jumper has two variables which is part of the host but in this case since it's group so group has two host and also these are group level variables you would understand this if you have not worked in yaml that's okay uh, we will learn yaml along with this journey when we write some ansible playbooks also we will be talking about variables in more details in future now this document also have some good examples on how to set up your inventories uh, for example if you see here they have db server and app server which is similar to our example that we were looking into in WSL. And they also have a few playbooks example, but we will be looking at them when we look into the playbooks later on. So if you want, you can refer to this uh, documentation, which is very comprehensive and has everything that you would ever need to understand Ansible inventories. Now let's go back to the WSL machine and let's do a demo. So in our case, we have two groups here. One is called DB servers. The other one is called web server db server has three three host we have alias them db123 and web server has two hosts so let me save this uh, file now and let's say we want to run our ad hoc uh, ping command against uh, first host which is db1 and we know that would work because db1 is our local host so let's say we say ansible db1 and module is ping and we say ask for the password because we have not enabled password ssh or and also we have not added password in our host.ini file. Now, in this case, if you see this failed because we have not specified the inventory. So Ansible says no inventory was passed, only localhost is available and could not match supplied host pattern ignoring DB1. So what we need to do is we need to also specify the inventory which against which we want to run this ad hoc command or uh, ping module. So now we can just say uh, hyphen m ping and hyphen i host.ini and then ask for the password. This time, although this would be successful, and if you see, although we said uh, connect to DB1, it actually got connected to the local host. Now, if if let's say we want to connect to all the DB servers, so instead of uh, giving the DB server one by one, we can just give DB server group name, and in this case now it will try to connect to both the servers or all the servers rather which were under DB servers group. And obviously, because uh, localhost uh, DB1 was pointing to localhost that is successful, and the other two, which were part of the DB server group called host1.example.com and the DB3, which were the third, third host, failed because obviously these three are not a correct host. So, in this case, it directly tried to connect to DB3. We might have a typo there. So, let's uh, review our host.ini file. Right. If you see here in the third case, it we have a typo here. So, let me fix that. So, that's why in case of DB2, it tried to connect to host1.example.com. And in case of DB3, it only because the keyword was wrong, it directly tried to connect to DB3 using its own uh, name. So that's why that's the difference between uh, these two outputs. So if you see here, you can see it's saying could not resolve hostname host1.example.com. And in the second one, it's just directly connecting to DB3. So let me clear this screen and run this command again. And in this case, now it first one is obviously successful. The rest two will fail. But the third one would be host2.example.com. DB2 is an alias for host2.example.com so which makes sense now because host1 and host2 are not valid hosts similar to that let's say if you want to run this command against web servers so we can just type the group name here and let's run this command in this case it would try it would try to connect to web1 and web2 because those were part of our inventory under web server group so if you see here web1 unreachable could not connect to host3.example.com 
web2 is unreachable could not connect to host4.example.com now let me clear this screen let's try to use that all keyword now so in this case as we are saying all that would mean that ansible will try to connect to everything which is in our inventory so we have 3 db servers and 2 web server so we would sh we should see at least the attempt made against db123 and web1 and 2 so here you go db1 is successful db2 unreachable db3 unreachable web1 and web2 are unreachable so i hope now you understand what is the significance of an ansible inventory how we can divide our hosts into groups and we also looked into the public documentation available in docs.ansible.com where we saw we can add variables, additional connection parameters uh, to our hosts in Ansible inventory which is supported in INI that is text file as well as in YAML format. And now in this video I also wanted to cover a little bit about YAML because when we write Ansible playbooks they are written in YAML so you need to have little bit understanding of YAML before actually you start writing Ansible playbooks and roles. So let's talk about YAML. Okay, so YAML was initially created in 2001. It was named by Clark Evans. He was the initial designer along with Ingi.net and Orion Bankick. So they designed YAML and YAML was originally said to mean yet another markup language because early 2000 and that was the time when we had lots of markup languages coming up because of World Wide Web was exploding. We had HTML, XML, SGML, etc. coming in at that era. But later on, they realized that YAML itself is not a markup language. It's, this language is more data oriented. So when they realized that, and in order to distinguish it from other markup languages, they, re, they, they repurposed the name and they said YAML ain't markup language. So YAML. YAML ain't markup language. Uh, it's data data oriented rather than uh, document markup. Currently, uh, the latest version is I think 1.2.2, which was released in 2021. YAML 1.0 was released in 2004. Then we had 1.1 in 2005, and then couple of releases in 2009, and then latest one in uh, in 2021. Now, if you see, this is a typical example of comparing three languages: X, uh, XML, JSON, and YAML. XML is a typical markup language, JSON and YAML is more data oriented. Now if you see here, XML is using tags to define the element and store the data. So we have a tag for note, tag for to and from and heading. So we have a data here which is a note to John from Jani and it's a reminder and the body is another tag which says don't forget me uh, this weekend. So XML stories, uh, stores the data in key for uh, tree format. Now on the other hand, JSON is like a key value pair. So you, you have a key called note, which has value everything on the right side within the curly braces. So note is the key and then one note, there could be multiple notes. In an array, if you want, you can create under JSON. And we, then we have two as key and value as John from Jani is the again value heading is key. So left side of uh, these columns are key and the right side are values. So this is key value pair. That's how JSON works. Now YAML also works like key value pair. So you have uh, left side you have key and then on the right side you have value. But YAML also allows you to represent data in list format or in sequence. So you can create a list that we would see later on in playbooks in YAML. You can say YAML is superset of JSON in a way that it has key value pairs but it offers a little bit more in terms of storing having the capability to store the data in a sequence or you know a list if you want now in yaml although the important thing uh, one of the most important thing to note is identification so identification is very important in yaml as compared to json or xml now in order to write ansible playbooks uh, knowing yaml i think is enough you need to also have a little bit understanding of jinja 2 templates but in if you want to write your custom modules, they are written in Python. So you would need to understand or have a little bit understanding of Python. But since this uh, this video is for absolute beginners, so you can just you know live with uh, just knowing YAML because you are going to create your playbooks using YAML, which would be then executing the modules on remote hosts. Now let's look at these examples. So 
So the first box on the left side is an example of key value pair. So item on the left side is key and the item on the right side is value. They are separated by two columns and a space. So country is a key, India is value. Continent is key, Asia is value. Planet is key, Earth is value. Star is sun and again star is key, sun is value. Galaxy is key and Milky Way is value. So this is an example of key value pair data type stored in YAML. Now the middle one is list or array. Now this is list and array. So a country is a list and you have different different countries. So if you notice identification here, I have two spaces here and then a dash. So dash would represent a single element in this list. And then we have a second element USA, Germany, China and France. Similarly, we have another list for continents and we have different different continents listed in this list. This is how we would represent list or an array within a YAML. Now the third one is dictionary or a map. So in this case, we have a dictionary about country India with capital largest city official language and HDI. And if you notice again, we have to follow the identification here. We have two spaces from the left and then again key value pair. So capital is the key and New Delhi is the value. Capital is a property of country India and you can think of India as a dictionary object or a map. Similarly, we have another map uh, for USA and it has capital largest city official language and HDI. An interesting thing to notice here is within dictionary, we can have a key which can have a multiple list as values. And again, if you notice like second example, we can represent that using hash icons. And again, if you notice, we have to follow the identification. We have two spaces here on the list as well. So I hope these three different type of data structures would help you identify how YAML represents different data. Now, one thing to notice here is in case of list, the order of item matters, right? So let's say if you are trying to loop through a list, they would be looped in a particular order. Now, in case of dictionary, the order of your elements doesn't matter. So you can have India as your dictionary and you can write capital first or the largest city first it doesn't matter so the order doesn't matter in this case but order matters in case of list list or array type of data structure again if you want to comment out some things you can just append your content with hash so in this case for example if i add hash in front of capital this key value pair gets removed from dictionary map of country india so this is a typical example of how different data structures are represented in yaml and they would be quite useful in future when we write playbooks and try to iterate through different types of data structures. So now after understanding little bit of YAML, I think we are ready to start writing some playbook that we would be discussing in our next video where we would be writing some sample playbooks and would try to run them using our WSL system that we have set up on our local machine. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and we will continue through this journey hopefully together. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.